All right, today is the day that we finally get to do the full review on the Posway V4 electric skateboard. Welcome to the Vapor Trail channel. I'm Tony B and yes, it has taken me a little bit of time to get this review done on the Posway V4, partly because when I first got this thing, I was a little bit unprepared. You know, you, you've got to have some safety stuff. You got to have a helmet, should have pads. I recommend wrist guards. So yeah, I had a helmet, but I didn't have the rest of the stuff. And well, my wife was like, you're definitely not safe going out there with just a helmet on. So when I got the wrist guards in, I said, well, that's enough. I can go out for a ride. I did, I went for a good long ride. And well, you know, about halfway through it, well, I, I turned around after I did this, but I had two crashes right in a row, mainly because I wasn't paying attention. And when you're going on one of these electric skateboards and you're flying down the road or the sidewalk or whatever, you gotta watch for those rocks, man. This board has a little bit narrower truck set on it. And so the wheels are a little bit closer together. It's harder to avoid the obstacles. And I hit a flat rock and the board just stopped and I went flying. So I ended up with a pretty gnarly road rash on my knee. It's still pretty bad. Well, it, the scab is off of it and my hand. And yeah, so I had to wait for these scabs to heal and to be completely done before I could get back out there with all my pads because now I have everything. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna review the Posway V4. And if you'd like to see the unboxing, I've done that one already about a week ago. A little bit of information about this board and how I came to have this board. Well, I got very interested in e-mobility, especially after we had a gas shortage here when the pipeline shut down for a week and we couldn't get gas in North Carolina. I was like, man, I wish I had something electric Electric that I could ride if I need to commute someplace or just go to the store or 7-Eleven or whatever. Then I went to California and I saw e-mobility everywhere. I was like, man, they got one wheels, they got unicycles, scooters, skateboards, all kinds of stuff, e-bikes. And I, just, I was fully enamored. So when I got back from that trip to San Diego, I was like, I've got to find out more about this. And I live in a condominium. I don't have a lot of room to put e-bikes and all that kind of stuff. So I was like, e-skate, that sounds like what I'm going to do, e-skateboard. So I contacted a few of the companies asking questions about them, letting them know that I have a channel and that I plan to do some videos on this stuff as soon as I'm able to figure out which one I want. Cause there's belt drive, there's hub drive. There's just, there's, there's a lot of options and there's a lot of things that you got to know. Well, the one company that was the most friendly and willing to answer questions and everything else was Posway. And they told me, they said, well, since you, I mean, I've ridden skateboards since I was a kid. I told them that and they said, well, that, that's fine, but it's different than an electric skateboard. If you're going to be riding these, we think you should go with the Posway V4 because this is more of a beginner board. I mean, it'd be good for anybody if you, you know, if you're not looking to go 30 miles an hour and 45 mile range, that type of thing. So they said, yeah, we, we want to send you this because this is probably the safest way for you to start. And I got to tell you, this is a fantastic beginner board. Even if you weren't a beginner, this might be a fantastic board. Maybe you just want an electric skateboard to be a partner to your regular skateboard. The Posway V4 is a really good choice, especially because price-wise, these things, man, you know, if you find, if you buy a cheap one, you can find them on Amazon, no name, uh, off-brand stuff for maybe 200 bucks or something like that. But typically the companies that have a little bit of a name, they're gonna go between 400 and uh, three, $4,000, yeah, no kidding. The Posway V4 is under $400. It's usually around 350 and in July, they had a sale going on for 279. So if you watch the sales, great. I'm gonna put a link down in the description, my affiliate link for Posway, and I've also got got a code for you so you can check those out and use those if you'd like to get one of these. Now one spec that is important and they asked me this question and I was like oh, that's pretty invasive. They said how much do you weigh? And you know, you do have to look, when you're looking at these boards, you have to look at the specs and you have to see what the weight limit on the board is. That's because the size of the motors and everything else. It's not that you're gonna break the board, or you know, I don't know, you might if you're way, way over the limit, but it's all about how much torque the motors can handle and how much weight the motors can handle with the torque that they have, I don't know. I think you understand what I'm saying though. So he told me that this board was rated up to 220 pounds, but, it's really better between 165 and 198. And I told them, well, guess what? I'm at 200 pounds right now. I used to be 245. If you've watched this channel for any time, yes, I've been losing weight. I've been eating better and exercising and things like that. And this e-skate stuff is just part of it. So right now I'm at 197. Uh, that's how much I weighed when I filmed the video yesterday. So that's definitely in that window of 165 to 198. But you know, you're gonna notice it. If you're, say that you try to approach a hill and you're like, okay, let me just 
try to go up this hill. Well, if you try to start dead stopped at the bottom of the hill, it's not really going to go. You might have to have a little bit of a run at it and you might have to put it in another gear or, you know, that type of thing. But the heavier you are, the, the more resistance it's going to have to going up grades. That's, that's the bottom line. A couple of important specs and a little bit about my journey so far. Let's take a look at this board. I've picked a really good spot to do this today. I'm out here at Sound Park on the Outer Banks of North Carolina, and what's great is that it's pretty much empty right now. There is like nothing. You can see that behind me is the sound, and then we'll just turn around this way, and you'll be able to see that it is nothing but parking lot, and also we've got some trails and stuff out here. So perfect timing. All right, well, I got my buddy Milo out here who's gonna be helping me today. Milo is assisting. He's not much of a skater, are you? But you do have this nice electric bike, which is something that I'm really interested in as well. Any kind of e-mobility is like my jam right now. That's what I'm all about. So Milo has agreed to come out and help me film a little bit, and then maybe possibly he will step on the Pazway V4 later on and see if he can do it. Because you've never ridden one, right? Not since I was 10. But, not an electric one, that's for sure. But you know your electric bike stuff, right? Oh, so, yeah. Okay. All right, good. Now, since this is my first full video, actually riding one of these and talking about it and all that kind of stuff, there is one thing that's very important that I should talk about. Gotta have a helmet, definitely. Now, I have taken a pretty good spill already, and that spill caused me some injuries that took me about a week and a half to, to recover from. A good skin knee, and just basically serious road rash. But I won't be having that now because now I've got my pads, and I'll do a video just on these pads, but I've got Protec elbow pads, We've got Protec knee pads, and I've also got some, let's see, these are 187 killer pads, wrist guards. Now, wrist guards, I tell you what, I, when I did take my crash, I was wearing the helmet and wrist guards. If I were wearing those, I might have broken my wrist. You gotta be careful about how you fall, and that's important too. So let me go ahead and suit up, put these things on, and we'll get going. Okay, so with this one, you would just hit this power button first. Then that's on. So you'll see the lights are blinking now for the skateboard. The skateboard's not on. You could either bend over and push the button or you can just give it a push. And now it's beeping and it's ready to go. that we have brake and acceleration okay so acceleration makes it go brake stops it if i want to reverse it there is a button here for reverse i just hit that and boop it'll come right back to you it's pretty nice that you can just throw that brake on isn't it milo it is nice it's like boom Okay, please excuse the messy workspace, but yeah, I'm, this is new to me as far as filming these goes. I'm used to filming a lot of other stuff, but I've had to change my techniques and stuff, so I'm sure everything will get a lot better as we go along. So what we've got here is the remote. This is the Posway remote and the board, and that's pretty much what you got. So technically this board is actually called the Posway V4 Spark Electric Skateboard. I think Spark is the addition of this. That would be the top grip tape on this one. Actually looks a little bit more like a standard longboard. Whereas the other one's kind of got like some, you know, fancy paint and stuff on them. 
Hold on, let me fix Evil Knievel here. Okay, so yeah, the Posway V4 Electric Spark Skateboard, just some basic specs on this, and you can go to the website and check all of the specs if you'd like. Say it's the best entry-level electric skateboard for beginners, it's super easy to learn, nice carving experience, safe speed for beginners, and smart braking system with unique design. That is one of the first questions that people ask me is like, does that thing have brakes on it? It does, it does have brakes. And I would tend to agree that it's really easy to learn because the remote on this thing is as basic as it gets. Some of these things can be pretty complicated. Top speed on this is 15 miles per hour or 25 kilometers per hour. Range on this is 10 miles. So that's another thing you have to look at is battery size. You'll notice that some of them had a battery back here and a battery up here or you know two components. And that's one of the things that gives them more battery power or it might have battery built into the actual board itself. And that's how they rate it basically is the range on this is 10 miles. I've never gone to where it runs out. 10 miles is that's a pretty good amount of distance. But some of the more advanced boards can go up 45 miles and stuff. Again, the max load on this board is 220 pounds. The weight of the board, and that's kind of important too because you're not always gonna be riding it. So when you have to carry it, the weight on this is 12.5 pounds. And it says the ideal weight to ride is less than 165 pounds. I have a friend that weighs about 170 pounds. Kevin got on this thing and rode it no problem. And I've been riding it no problem uh, at around 197 to 201. Because weight does affect the performance of the job, especially on an incline, I would guess that's one of the reasons why they wanna make sure that they tell you that. Now this is kind of important. It does have three different speed modes on it. So you've got low, medium, and high. Some of these remotes can be kind of difficult to figure that out, like how to switch, you know, gears and whatever else. This one's very easy and it says right on here, acceleration, brake. So to accelerate, go forward. And then to brake, you just push back. It's very, very simple. When you turn this one on, you just push the power button. All right, so this is on, but the board is blinking because the board is not connected. It's not turned on. So you have two choices. You can either hit this button right here, when that does, now you can see that the board is connecting and it's got full power. That's why you've got three bars right there. And when this thing, when the remote battery gets low, that light right there is gonna come on. It's gonna tell you, hey, uh, you've only got a few miles left. You better get home or charge it. Some people actually carry like a power bank and plug it in. Just take a break for 10 minutes or so. All right, this is what we're gonna do. I'm gonna turn this off and then I'm going to turn this off. Okay, you don't have to lean over to push the button when you put this thing on the ground. All you do is you turn on the remote just like that, and then you just wanna see how that beeped when I did that and turned itself on. Basically, all you have to do is put it on the ground, push it off, and it will start. And then once you do, man, listen to those wheels. and then break. See, let's let's go ahead and do this. And then break. So the braking really does work good on this thing. And then if you want to go in reverse, you just hit this. And then you can see that it's red now. Now, it's just going the other way. It's very, very easy to understand and that's what they mean by very, being very simple for beginners. That was in high, by the way. Let's take that down to low. Let's give it a little. So you can tell the difference between low, medium, and high. So that is a big difference and it's something you gotta keep, you know, in mind as you're riding this thing. If you're like, oh yeah, let me just go ahead and put it in high and you kick this thing off without knowing, it could throw you right off the board. Or if you brake too hard, that could throw you right off the board. I mean, the truth is there's a lot of things that could throw you right off of a board when you're talking about electric skateboard, acceleration, braking, whatever. All right, so the way this thing works is you've got motors in each one of these wheels here, a hub motor, which is basically self-contained. So you can see that the wire goes right up inside of the truck and then it is, uh, you know, goes, you know, goes into the uh, into the motor. So those are two motors that are on this. Some of these electric skateboards will have belt drive motors on them, and you'll see that the motors typically hang off of the back on them, and there would be a belt from the motor to a cog that's on the back, you know, a gear that's on the back of the actual wheel. And the wheels look more like skateboard wheels. You don't have the, you know, the cover on that. Of course, these front ones don't have those. 
Those just screw on like normal ones. These are a sleeve that goes around the motor that's inside there. And to turn it off, all you have to do is hit this button right there. That is really, really simple. Now this board does have a concave to it. They call it a W concave. And this has got a good amount of concave to it and that will help to keep your foot on there. You can see that the board is curved. And the deck is an eight layer maple deck. You can see the layers there, but I will tell you that I have a little bit of delamination right there. It's just a little bit and yeah, it's typical for a maple deck to have a little bit of that. And I have been riding this for oh, about a month now. By the way, those hub motors are 700 watts. What is nice is it does have a little arrow at the front to show you what the front is because the front and the back look the same. And really you, you want to be riding this thing the correct way because these are gonna be pushing it. That's what you want is the back to be pushing it. Now, a lot of people don't think about batteries or even know exactly what you know batteries would be inside of these things. Uh, this has the 7S2P18650. That means that there are 18650 batteries that are packed into the battery pack. They say the climbing grade on this is 15 percent i haven't had too many problems actually they do have a few different designs for the v4 on the you know the grip tape they've got some nice painting looks and stuff like that but i just wanted a more traditional longboard look it looks just like a longboard this one does but i tell you what she's got a lot of power and it's a lot of fun to ride so for what they're calling a beginner board yeah it's probably good for beginners but i think anybody could ride this thing if you don't want to spend uh eight hundred dollars to three thousand dollars on an electric skateboard then the Posway V4 might be a very good option for you, especially at under $300. And even when it's not on sale, I think it's about 350 bucks. I mean, you know, you spend that on Starbucks coffee in a month. Well, maybe you don't, I know I don't, but I, there's probably people that do. I think you get my point. It's really not that expensive. And it's great if you just want something simple to commute with. If you, maybe you work pretty close to home, just want to jump on your skateboard and ride on in. Just make sure you wear your helmet. And I would suggest the other pads, I'm just saying. For me, the Posway V4 is a great electric skateboard for just about anybody and i highly recommend it so do check it out links are down there in the description and i want to thank you so much for your support here on the channel likes comments shares subscriptions are always very important to any channel especially mine it can use all the help that it can get and if you like this kind of content i've got a lot more coming i'm going to do a video on the pro tech pads and all that kind of stuff i've got some old bones therapy compression sleeves that i'm going to show you i've got a new all-terrain board that i'm going to be doing a video on and i'm just i, I just want to include some lifestyle stuff with this e-skateboarding and and more e mobility as i can get into that stuff i, I just i think if i'm going to get an e-bike like a, an electric bike i think i'm probably going to have to get a storage kind of life man but you know I, I do live close to the water so i'll deal with that well thank you again and that's going to do it for this episode we'll catch you next time on the vapor trail channel